Welcome to the Taurus New Moon webinar of the 2025 initiative. Today we bring our collective focus to the UN Sustainable Development Goal 12, Responsible Consumption and Production. And I welcome our panelists today to take lead and share with us uh, their thoughts and vision of the important goal, leading us later into conversation and meditation. So, friends, please unmute yourself. May I share my screen, Alexander? Yes, you should have now the function. Now we can see. Thank you. Thank you. Right, and so as I was acknowledging Klesha before, um, she has prepared this slideshow for us and is just not able to be with us today. So, um, yeah, thank you to Klesha. So, we're working with Taurus and Sustainable Development Goal 12. We will want to focus on um, some different aspects today, um, the, the aspect of consumption and production. Um, so the, ac the activity of um, consciousness in the process of um, consumption and production, creating um, links between um, the UN and the community is a really important part of our focus as well, so that this work becomes not just um, um, a, a um, formalised set of principles that are being actioned by UN organisations, but that are also linking to the grassroots in the community and then back again to the UN, so that the intention behind the goals becomes a real circulation um, between community and government. And of course, it's focusing on inspiring hope, because there's a lot of um, things that are happening that um, are not hopeful. So um, we want to actually shift the focus onto what is happening and what can happen. So I'll hand over to Katya to talk a little bit about astrology. We, when we were discussing this, we came up with the idea of Taurus as what we value because it embodies desire um, and form. And um, so we wanted to just focus on that because that's um, very pertinent to what we consume and, and where we um, place our our emphasis when we buy things and the kind and just the kind of things that get produced. Um, but I'll pass over to you, Katia, to to talk a little bit about um, some of the forces and rays that are involved um, and energies and the timing of the moment involved with Taurus. Sure. Well, I think a lot of people are aware of this energy that is um, touring energy that stimulates desire. It stimulates it to the point of actually manifestation on the physical plan. In um, which in this manifestation, you know, it becomes very tangible. And um, we can work with it. But besides that, there is also the energy of will and direction. And I think that if we combine those two, at least manifestation and direction, then we can meditate the new purpose of consumption and given the fact that mechanism of that is very slow because any physical manifestation has a 
very slow developing form. And the lag for that form needs to be over and then shifted into a new one. So I think we, you know, we need to meditate an intention of using that energy into creating something utterly new. And um, astrologically, we have a very interesting combination right now. The planet of Uranus, that was the great being that we call Uranus, just moved into Taurus. It happened almost at the exact time of the new moon, I believe. And um, through that, the new pattern can be achieved if we persist in creating that vision, which is again beneficial, the uh, turn energy um, beneficial for us to create vision, new vision. So Uranus is here, it's going to be going back and forth so we can again build that bridge between the that point in the mind of God from where that will comes to the point of Taurus when that will manifests mm. manifests in the plane of matter also it's interesting because an opposing an opposing sign which is the same energy but you know coming from a different sign also the pretty much the energy of will you know the first ray to which in Taurus we are getting through Vulcan. Scorpio gets on from Pluto. So right now we have Jupiter in Scorpio. And that is allowing us, and basically for, uh, for the entrance of Uranus into Taurus, it was on ascendant for uh, United States, for, for, for New York, United States. So it is a beneficial opportunity for us to have courage, to look deep and change things in their reasons, in their originating principles. So great time to meditate on the world consumption. Um, thank you for now and uh, we'll be at something later. Back to you, Rebecca, or to you, Dot. So as you said that, Katya, um, I want to say that as Uranus, with this, with its seventh ray influence, as you say, is entering into Taurus with this new moon for this for a seven year cycle, Antonella Nobilo suggests that this is an opportunity to anchor the Shambhala energy to produce the materialization of the light of life. Uh, so it made me think of that when you just shared that piece and anchoring it right on through. So as we talk about ensuring sustainable consumption and production patterns with the SDG 12, sustainable consumption and production aims at doing more and better with less, increasing net welfare gains from economic activities by reducing resource use, degradation, and pollution along the whole life cycle while increasing quality of life, which really speaks to that combination of Taurus and what we value, and Jupiter, as you mentioned, presently retrograding in Scorpio, Katja. And Sharon Deep made a comment this morning. Uh, Jupiter can be heard on deeply inner levels as if saying, do not drown in the emotion of all that is occurring. Keep your head above the water. And it might be a good day to keep in mind and very close to heart that movements are being made to transmute if possible, the labors of destruction into constructive work, which is really what we're talking about. So Klesha asks the question, will we continue to cleave to materialistic values or the spiritual values that will enable the manifestation of a culture of peace? And she suggests that this is qualitative versus quantitative values. So back to you, Rebecca. So yes, there's um, just a little list of the 
that Kalish has come up with of the different values that qualitative and quantitative here, um, you know, actual adventure and the adventure of life and the path versus video games, authenticity versus reality TV, connection versus shopping, intimacy versus pornography, um, you know, all of these values that, um, that can exist along a spectrum um, a lot of the time. Um, so if we just move into introducing the goal itself, um, just got a bit of a diagram here of the sub goals. Um, and um, you can see um, the first goal is about implementing the 10 year framework. We're gonna just concentrate on a couple of the goals, the sub goals, um, but yeah, just quickly running through them. Obviously the sustainable use of natural resources, which relates to what Doc was just saying, um, reducing waste, um, managing chemicals and waste and hopefully um, finding and chemical waste, hopefully finding different ways of doing things, reducing waste generation, encouraging companies and corporations to adopt sustainable practices, promoting sustainable government purchasing. Um, so because governments use it so much um, to actually be very focused about the quality and of what is being used by governments and encourage them to use products that are um, developed sustainably and ensuring information and awareness and education. So um, that's the, and there are three um, targets as well and the first one is concentrating on tourism, um, then wanting to remove distortions around fossil fuels and um, energy um, subsidies and things like that, and supporting developing countries to develop in sustainable ways. Um, so just um, for people who don't know, like I didn't, what the 10 year, 10 year framework is, and um, it's actually a framework of programs that's been developed by the United Nations to focus specifically on this idea of sustainability and looking at practices. And it's trying to um, bring everyone together, people who are already, uh, groups, corporations who are already doing these things, um, encouraging partnerships to generate what's called collective impact for everyone to work together towards this. Um, it, has, um, it has a number of, focus areas and objectives, which I won't go into, but just um, to let you know that that framework is really about um, trying to bring people together, which is such an important part of what we're doing. Um, so these are some of the things that we want to focus on, sustainable resources, management of chemical waste and reducing waste generation. Oh, that, that's just what we just went through actually. Um, and this is the idea of active versus passive. So um, um, the idea of interaction and relationship again, engagement um, versus, versus just this idea of um, passively receiving information, which gives the opportunity for manipulation. And, you know, obviously we need to use the faculty of discrimination which DK talks about so much if we want to be active consumers. Uh, this was just looking at um, um, adopting sustainable practices. I'm not sh totally sure what this was about because it was a slide that Kleesha was going to speak to. Um, this is a slide that Kleesha's included about the imagination and that is such an important part of um, creating goods for consumption because they come from our imagination and they come from this connection or spiritual reading almost of what 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 objects purpose they serve in the world and what their connection is on a higher archetypal level so I'll just read through it um, with the flowering of the imagination, the world itself became animated and re-sacralized. The creative imagination is not something that dwells in us, but is rooted deeply in the life of the greater world. The creative spirit, the spiritus mundi, permeates the stars, growing plants, and all of reality. 
as nature brings forth its fragrant tapestry of life, the world spirit exhales and blooms forth creatively. The world itself breathes and we participate in the vital breath. Mm. And so this is a, an approach that we can take when we are creating things as well because it speaks of creation from the higher levels. Mm. And Rebecca, um, this, just a quick comment. This is Dot. Mm. Elise, Elise and Kenneth Folding, uh, two who were two leading peace educators and researchers, very focused on creating the conditions for a culture of peace. They both always said, if you can imagine it, it is possible. Mm. Which in a way is obvious, uh, and yet in another way, it's uh, something for us to uh, take heart in right now as we mm. know to use the creative imagination, particularly with this kind of goal. Yes, and, it, and it's so much the word use that you just said is so important because it's so easy for us to um, not focus and you know this penetrating light of the path that we need for Taurus, the penetration of the will to focus our imaginations in ways that are purposeful and aligned is what we, what we need to be doing. Yeah. Yeah, so here's um, something that Klesha brought for us as well, which is the story of sugar. And as we discussed this together in preparation for the webinar, we, we talked about how this, this is kind of an example of any commodity that we have and how commodities, um, this production process becomes focused around profit and not so much around um, the the use and the, the the need the need and the the need connected use of things um, and the purposeful use of things. So sugar started off as a luxury item of the upper classes, and as colonisation occurred, um, we we had, saw the development of sugar plantations. We saw the exploitation of Human, human people as resources in this process, as commodities in machinery in this process of, of sugar production. Um, and then the widespread development of sugar plantations. Um, and then as that exploded, um, the lowering of prices um, and the need to sustain a market so that those who were profiting from it could continue to profit from it. So the a transformation of what was a luxury item into a necessity item um, and and then further increased production um, at the expense of the environment um, and at the continued even though slavery back here was out was outlawed um, the, the continued exploitation of workers um, as sort of machines to to and low paid and as just not as humans but as workers to to produce this commodity in order to produce profits for those who are um, holding the reins of this industry. Um, to the point that, um, and there's details, there's a link, I'm not sure if we've posted the links page but I'll um, um, make sure that I put that up for you, Alexander, to post in the chat. Um, um, there's a link in that page to to this story about sugar and how um, corruption then moved in. Um, so there's powerful lobbying that goes on so that people don't get to hear about um, what's happening, how how the environment is being degraded and how sugar is actually eroding the, the health of the general population. Um, and of course this has now become a problem because it's sugar is entrenched in all our products and people are accustomed and to and addicted to to use it so mm -hmm. it's a, it's a um i guess a story from the darker side and the vision of what we want to do differently in terms of focusing on um consumer consumers as people with needs that need to be met rather than um, coming from the corporation side of things where where it's about profits to be made. 
exactly. And there's a, it actually leads to talking about uh, four bottom lines, people, planet, purpose, and profit. And we could uh, maybe take turns putting that in one, two, three, four, what's most important, but inevitably profit being at the bottom. So, mm. and as Kalisha says, what we need is industry that looks after the environment, the health, and the well-being of the consumer, and then the bottom line. Yeah, absolutely. And, but, yeah, you know, it's just... I, I, and I would even add that, you know, the whole re the rethinking and restructuring the understanding of what profit truly is, exactly. you know, according to actual new, um, new understanding of current situation, conditions, and the goals. Mm. And and so profit is about um, the the generation of the circulation of abundance um, to serve the whole system rather than a particular portion of the system and and in that sense profit can become something um, beneficial and connected um, but yeah. it's, it's the distribution that's important yeah and how we value ourselves and that's uh, Katya as, and Rebecca as you both share that our earlier conversation comes to mind that the tendency out here is uh, to value ourselves in terms of profit or as known as money. And as you're suggesting, Katja, the SDG 12 encourages a, a rethink, a reimagination, a reframe on that. And uh, that would be a good conversation for all of us as a group. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Um, so just referring to the idea of distribution profit as um, distribution and something that needs to be distributed. <laughs> um, here's a quote from um, DK talking about um, the distribution of the world's resources and um, how we can generate a culture of peace. So the distribution of the world's resources and the settled unity of the people peoples of the world are in reality one and the same thing. For behind all modern wars lies a fundamental economic problem. Solve that and the wars will very largely cease. In considering therefore the preservation of peace, it becomes immediately apparent that race, security and world stability are primarily tied up with the economic problem. When there is freedom from want, one of the major causes of war will disappear. Where there is an uneven distribution of the world's riches and where there is a situation in which some nations have or take everything and other nations lack the necessities of life, it is obvious that there will be a trouble breeding factor there and something must be done. Therefore, we should deal with world unity and peace primarily from the angle of the economic problem. And so over to you, Doc, to speak a little bit more about that and the culture of peace that um, um, consumption and production is integral to and embraced within. Mm. So, yeah, Lee Spaulding has spoken to this beautifully. And we want to share um, a little bit about the very definition of a culture of peace for our further discussion. And from the United Nations Declaration and Program of Action on the Culture of Peace, a culture of peace is a set of values, attitudes, traditions, and modes of behavior and ways of life. And the Earth Charter defines peace as the wholeness created by right relationships with oneself, other persons, other cultures, other life, earth, and the larger whole of which all are a part. So simply put, peace is living in right relationship with self, others, and all life. And how do we action these definitions and talk about a sustainable culture of peace where every situation requires a, a perhaps a reframe is the best way to say it. And how do we move through this time of, of breakdown and distress and in 
cosmic fire, uh, it's hinted at that the word through gives us a key. And when we think about, uh, for example, the, the fourth ray of harmony through conflict, uh, we're not suggested, it's not suggested to go around or over or under or anything, it's through. So we welcome conflict knowing that we can resolve conflict prior to escalation to violence. So as we proactively create conditions for a culture of peace, uh, again, as Kalisha had said a number of times, this particular sustainable development goal is critical in short, because it has to do with the law of economy and economics itself. And sharing is one of the keynotes uh, within the culture of peace. So when we talk about putting our values into uh, expression, there are a number of things that we'd like to share that uh, Rebecca and Klesia and Katja and I came up with. Uh, but perhaps initially, let's say that it's for each of us to be thinking, to have our thoughts reflect this. And it goes back to our opening, as Rebecca shared, uh, that we are, are talking about uh, inspiring hope and telling the story. And I want to share what uh, Martha Gallahue uh, sent to us in relation to this particular sharing today. Uh, she said uh, that these beautiful webinars do magic, bringing to light the culture of peace via an amazing blueprint agreed upon by all 193 countries at the United Nations. And as the SDGs tend to be quantitative, our task is to bring them to life via quality. So again, this is Martha speaking. I've been pondering upon the relationship of goal 12, production and consumption, to the law of economy the third great principle, intelligent activity. And sometimes it helps me to shift my focus from part to whole, and then from whole to part, what the future evolved humanity is birthing today via our mindsets, our practices, our expanding sense of responsibility to take charge of humanity's relationship with this planet. It leads me to celebrate the actualization we see around us of what we call the externalization of the hierarchy. Finding adequate translation of this can seem daunting. And I look to the growing community of humanity saturated by goodwill and ultimately will to good. This is about us and we must tell the story today, no matter the outer appearances. We are at a great turning. Hmm. Yeah, so thanks to Martha for those words. Um, and yeah, so um, taking that, that hope and that intention to anchor those thoughts into the world, um, just some examples of how, how this is happening. Um, this is a quote from DK, I'll just move through that. Um, and yeah, just some examples. Um, so we wanted to mention the focus this year on International Day of Peace, on the right to peace. Um, and so that is Peace Day and this whole um, movement to peace is a, a great example of um, what's what's happening to anchor the, these ideas. Did you want to say anything about that, Dot, more or? The only thing I, I want to say about that, Rebecca, is that the United Nations has been asking the question for many years now, is peace a human right? Uh, mm -hmm. And so now to bring this to the fore on the International Day of Peace, uh, thematically, it really the right to peace is part of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. So again, very heartening that we are externalizing and institutionalizing peace. Mm. And so important, the, the um, previous um, quotation from DK about the importance of economic justice and um, right uh, economics and production and consumption for um, the right to peace. So it's so connected, isn't it? 
Um, so this is an example of a, a group called Bali um, and they're working with the idea of localism. So they've looked at um, how things work. So when a corporation or um, is in charge of the economics of a, of a particular kind of production or de service delivery, 75% of the profits um, are taken away from the community. Um, for every hundred dollars spent at a local business, sixty-seven dollars stays in the community. But when you shop at a big box store, only half of that amount um, stays. Less than half of the amount stays in the community. Um, but when you look at job creation, which a lot of times big corporations are saying that's what they're doing for us, 90% of net new jobs in the United States are created by locally owned businesses. So this group is really saying this is an important way and it operates through relationship, through local community and connection. And they've come up with a set of um, steps uh, or um, principles that they're, that they're using and in the centre are, are their principles. So act locally first, prioritise equity, they're all principles of peaceful living. Prioritise equity, regenerate soil and nature, accelerate collaboration, share ownership, shift capital, circulate capital, co-create policy and cultivate connection. So uh, I found them that very inspiring. Um, this is another um, example of the ifixit.org, you can find them on the web. They're trying to answer back to this whole idea of um, planned obsolescence and just throw things away because it's cheaper to buy a new one than get it fixed. They've actually got a global community of people, just consumers and different people working together. You can go on the net and try and find solutions to be able to repair things that have broken instead of throwing them away. So yeah, um, that's a wonderful. So many initiatives like that are worldwide that are now about recycle reuse, regenerate and repurpose. Hmm. Uh, yeah, a lot of repurposing yeah. going on. Yeah, and um, yeah, using tyres I saw at our local festival, folk festival one year, someone who was using old tyres and tyre linings to make handbags and um, you know, things like that. So yeah, there's, it's again back to the imagination. What can we imagine and how can we imagine things differently? Yeah. Um, this was actually something that came from you, Dot, um, yeah. just about yeah. new activism. Do you want to speak to this a little bit? Yeah, that ties to the way we're thinking about the culture of peace. And some, again, we're, all of us talk about all the time, language is so challenging. Nonetheless, this gives us a bit of a framework to look at old culture, new culture, so that, and, and as we're standing together in this Torian energy right now, uh, our values, our frames, our worldviews of consumerism, marketization, and it, it has been about self-interest and uh, individualized in many cases with a very small ring pass knot for who gets that kind of uh, growth and uh, the old way of looking at profit and the new culture uh, has more to do with the well-being of all sufficiency where every every everyone's needs are met uh, and not all needs are of, of the same stature in terms of um, what is needed culturally or uh, sometimes even money differentials etc but everyone's needs basic needs get met and we find ourselves with a global solidarity in that regard so anyway this it we have found this helpful to generate discussion about the culture of peace hmm. so um, this was just a little part about tourism um, and Cleish is not here to speak to this but when we were discussing it she was actually talking about localism in tourism as well and how um, it was very simple, you know there are some very simple initiatives there to um, with local people just simply providing for visitors needs um, and yeah it's such a focus in this goal this idea of tourism because it's did, did, 
generating immense sort of destruction and waste and things in certain places. Um, so it's it's important to think about um, tourism within that that context of a culture of peace and actually revision um, tourism more as pilgrimage, as communication, as coming to um, places with a humility to receive the culture of the place and exchange and um, um, yeah, within a different mind frame rather than just sort of coming and pillaging and ravaging and <laughs> that kind of thing. And there are also some links in the links page, which I'll try and get up for you um, about um, responsible travel and things like that. There are movements out there that are actually focusing on that. Um, these are just a couple of um, quotations, I won't read them, just from Phil Cousineau who um, is focusing here on being more soulful in the way that we travel and um, you know actually trying to connect deeply with what we're doing and why we're travelling and how we're um, experiencing. So that brings us to meditation time, but do we want to open up for discussion? Can we, are there any people that would like to say things that are listening and um, can you take that, that part of the process, Alexander? Uh, yes, absolutely. So if anyone would like to share, please uh, use the function, raise your hand on the control panel and uh, we will unmute you. Oh, well, people are collecting their thoughts. Just would like to add a couple of things. First of all, um, about Taurus, it um, rules the neck and thyroid gland, and it also relates to the throat center, sacral center. So the right use of the organs of speech gives the clue to processes you know, whereby the sepal must bring about certain basic changes. And uh, this is about the creative energy that moves through our throat center. And that brings me back to the production of words. Words, you know, the same thing as material forms, sometimes completely unsubstantiated with the energy. And uh, I think when we talk about spiritual, you know, and goodwill, whatever workers in that field, it's important to start bringing together the energy and the amount of words that we're producing. <laughs> and um, yes, and um, also to the point that Dot was bringing at the beginning, the when we put together, there's a first ray energy and the seventh ray energy right now in Taurus. But in order to maintain the triangle, we need to bring in as well the energy of the second ray to bring in the heart, that hard line of the first and the seventh. So there will be a qualifying agent and a sense of what is truly necessary and possible, the measure of the heart in that um, in that energy so we won't bring too much light that we cannot distribute and work with so that is two things that i wanted to add thank you over and out i have a um, comment to contribute to the collective pool of impressions. Um, back to that uh, notion of the power of thought and uh, intention. It's, I think it's very uh, linked to this goal 12 of well, responsible consumption. Uh, because responsibility, we can control only own responsibility in how we consume and do what we do. And uh, it actually, I believe, has much bigger impact than 
we think because if we do it consciously and when we anytime we not we refuse to use a plastic bag or plastic uh, cup and put our thought behind that we amplify that action and we kind of write in it in the as a certain behavior pattern right in, into the model so we are empowering that with the power of our thoughts so let's not underestimate our own actions supported with the focused intention of meditation and also supported by the extra energy that gets generated when we come together as a group um, because we're, we're, it's, the group is more than the collective um, units of the individual's energy so um, by working as a group we're really um, amplifying that, that potency that you're talking about Alexander. Uh, John, please. I just wanted to offer the observation that the right use of resources is really under the greater umbrella of right human relations. Often when we say right human relations, we think of human interrelations, how we uh, interact with one another. But it also applies to all kingdoms, mineral, plant, animal, those beyond us. So I think it's hopeful and helpful to look at these initiatives of sustainable production and consumption as yet one other facet of the developing improvements in how we as a planet behave with one another. So true, yeah, beautiful. Rebecca, there seems to be no more uh, comments from the group. So I think we can move to meditation. Okay, thank you. So we were going to start today by just focusing on the prayer for the United Nations that we've been magnetizing and using across these sessions. So um, as we just settle into changing from dialogue um, into into human dialogue um, to expand that um, internally to connect with the higher parts of ourselves and our collective soul group center and with a hierarchical energies which we invoke to support our work. Come into a stillness and receptivity. As we invoke the light for the United Nations. May the peace and the blessings of the Holy Ones pour forth over the worlds and rest upon the United Nations, on the work and the workers, protecting, purifying, energizing and strengthening. There is a peace which passes understanding it abides in the hearts of those who live in the eternal. 
There is a power that makes all things new. It lives and moves in all those who know the self as one. May the rhythm of that peace vibrate within the United Nations and in the heart of every worker. May the rhythm of that creative power resound within the United Nations and in the lives of all who serve there, awakening, transmuting and giving birth to that which ought to be. May the chalice that the United Nations is building become a focal point for the descent of spiritual force, filling it and overflowing to the world and drawing towards itself all those whose work lies there. May the consciousness of the United Nations become ever more at one and the many lights become one light. May the aspiration and the dedication of the United Nations burn as a clear flame in the service of humanity. May the love and the light and the life of the one light pour through the United Nations, cleansing it from all evil and attracting all good. And as we sit with the resonance of that prayer, we can also bring to mind our fellow workers in the spiritual caucus of the United Nations who are meditating at this time and are consciously connecting with us. And now, as we see ourselves as souls and see ourselves as in service to the group and humanity, we align vertically with the angel of the presence and see the group at the center of the cross, standing within the periphery of the surrounding ashram great center of love and light. We visualize goodwill and the will to good flowing from the ashram through the group at the center into the horizontal arms of the cross spreading, bringing relief, light, love and healing throughout the world of men. As we focus the mantra of love at the center of all love we stand. And from that center, I, the soul will outward move. From that center, I, the one who serves, will work. May the love of the divine self be shared abroad in my heart, through my group and throughout the world.
And as we focus in that distributing center of the cross, we focus simultaneously with the vertical arm of the cross. We focus our creative imagination, our will as we have discussed today. And we ascend up the vertical arm to connect with the higher place where we may receive impressions. And in becoming receptive, we open and focus to our keynotes of light. Taurus, the penetrating light of the path. This is a beam of light streaming forth from the point in area, Aries and revealing the area of light control. focused will the penetrating light of the path and through that will the keynote the other keynote of Taurus I see and when the eye is opened, all is light. And through that light, we visualize the radiant network of the new group of world servers opening to receive the thought forms of solution. Becoming receptive to the thought forms of solution for sustainable consumption and production through the illumination and focus of Taurus. And when you are ready, gathering together any impressions, connecting from this height on the vertical arm of the cross, again with the center of the cross from where the distribution 
pause forth. Allowing that distribution to be distributed along the horizontal arms so that the cross is functioning in its whole perfection. And the doors of spiritual opportunity are opened to humanity through that center of the cross. That the future may stand revealed. In the light of the eye of Taurus. And as we continue that intention of distribution, we intone the great invocation. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men. The purpose which the masters know and serve. And from the center which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Oh,
Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Rebecca and Dr. Katya. We continue our work together and we invite you to join our next online event on May 26th, online conference, radiating the living light of the soul, grounding the real. We will work with the energies of Gemini full moon, linking with the energy of Sagittarius, working with the axis of Gemini solstice to bring the impulse of the high interlude into distribution, uh, meditating together and discussing in small groups. And uh, uh, our panelists at this conference will be Nancy Seifer, Martin Buick, Dot Maver, and Daniel Hersheson. So we invite you to join uh, us on May 26th at uh, 6 p.m. GMT. Uh, please uh, uh, recalculate it for your time zone. And uh, I want to use the opportunity of this gathering us to be being together now uh, to ask for your assistance uh, testing a new platform that we're planning to use for this conference. Uh, we're exploring the possibility to use a Zoom and we would like to have a test uh, call now right after this webinar so we uh, if you have a few minutes uh, that you can spare for this we invite you to use the link in the chat window uh, if you could just click that link and copy the meeting ID for that uh, um, test meeting and so that for those of you who could join um, we could rejoin together within the zoom room to test this new platform new for us um, so um, we will start then that meeting in a few minutes so i invite you to copy that link in the chat window now um, if anyone has any uh last comments before we end this webinar please raise your hand and I will unmute you or oh, unmute yourself if you are already muted Alexander I just wanted to let you know that I am just about to email you the document with the links for from this talk in it um, so I'll do that now I'm not sure whether you'll be able to post it so people can access it or not but um, I'll do that now. Hi, Alexander, it's Margot here. I don't see the, um, the link for Zoom. It's in the announcements. Okay, thank you. On the screen you see announcements, just go there and it's there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, thanks. Uh, on my screen, it's in the chat uh, section of the control panel. Sorry, say that again, please. Is it where the the, the two figures are uh, at the top? C can you move the cur your cursor there to it for me, please? It's a control panel. That's yeah. where you um, raise your hand. So yeah. on the, that control panel, there is a chat uh, section. Uh, and if you click the chat box, you will see there uh, a link uh, to Zoom and meeting ID. Okay, thank you, Alex. And it's at the, it's the very top above the, the list of names where it says announcements. If you uh, okay, click on I, that, I it think will what, take the, what the issue is here is I'm on my iPad and not the computer, and I don't I don't see the list of attendees or anything else like that. Anyway. Zoom, I know that Zoom works well for me, so if I if I don't participate, um, I'll see you the next time. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Margot. And now you can uh, download the document with links that Rebecca just shared with me. So I will keep the platform open 
for another minute that uh, you could uh, download the file with the links. And then I will reopen Zoom. Oh, thank you, everybody, and uh, goodbye.